Hi, I'm John Calder. Let's look at how bass, low frequency sound, works in rooms. After years of researching this, I know, it's complicated, so please bear with me. In recording studios, home theaters, and stereo rooms, bass works differently than the mid and high frequencies above 200 Hz. For bass, a room's dimensions directly affect the sound. This tube represents the distance between two parallel surfaces. Watch what happens when I power up this tube's resonant frequency. When a sound frequency's wavelength is equal to a room dimension, a resonance is created. These resonances are called room modes. For example, a 12-foot wide room will have a resonance around 94 hertz because the wavelength of 94 hertz is also 12 feet. As a result, if you sit here, you'll hear very little sound around this frequency because in the center, room modes cancel energy, causing a null in level. If you sit here, you'll hear too much sound around this frequency because at a quarter of the dimension, room modes add energy. Sitting here is better, but only for this mode. Most rooms have at least three main modes, length, width, and height. Room mode cancellations and additions cause massive base level changes throughout a single listening area regardless of the source accuracy. And that's just the first problem. Second, room mode resonances sustain much longer than the original sound, causing destructively long reverberation times around those frequencies. Third, when low frequency wavelengths become longer than room dimensions, they can't fully develop. This is called the room crossover, usually around 200 Hz, where sound transitions from velocity-based to pressure-based. Room mode problems, huge level variations, longer reverberation times, and room crossover create major bass inaccuracies. So, how do we mitigate room modes? Well, we can't reduce a null with absorption. Fortunately, if you absorb energy where the mode additions are greatest, the nulls are also reduced. Gotta love the laws of physics. But fiberglass type absorbers, typically used to absorb mid and high frequencies, don't work below 200 Hz because they're velocity based. However, our pressure based membrane absorbers are effective below 200 Hz. The velocity of sound is 1130 feet per second and 0 feet per second at boundary surfaces. But that's where sound pressure is greatest, so that's where we place our membranes. Curved diffusers and corner sorbers have built-in membranes that work together to absorb 45 to 250 hertz. You might ask, how do we know our base absorbers work? Accurate lab testing. If your eye test isn't accurate, you may not see accurately. Likewise, you may not hear base accurately if your base traps haven't been accurately lab tested to prove they work. We tested our bass absorbers at the only commercial acoustics test lab large enough to accurately test bass absorption down to 30 Hz, NWAA Labs in Alma, Washington. The combined results of curve and corner sorber low frequency tests prove they work to reduce room modes. We published a paper in the Journal of the Acoustical Society of America detailing our testing and the results. Let's be clear. We're not reducing bass energy from direct sound, only from room modes. Effective bass absorption clarifies low frequencies without reducing sound from the source. Only accurately tested and laboratory proven low frequency absorbers work to reduce a room's destructive effects on bass for live and recorded sound. Thanks for watching.